uh, what we're going to talk about today is mobile edit. Now, I, I, you know, I'm not going to go into, you know, when they were invented and stuff like that. That would be if you want to ask that question of the sun, something like that. What I'm going to show you, though, is some things I really like about this tool and, and some reasons I like it. So now I'm going to show you what I like about it, but I'm going to show you and tell you exactly why I like it. And it's because of just me still working with law enforcement every single day. Um, so we're going to kind of break this down about some things I do like about mobile edit. Now, first off, so here's what the basic interface looks like right here. This is after you've plugged the phone in and you can actually see that the phone is attached and ready to go. A couple of cool things about this. When it first begins, number one, if there's something in, that's a problem, like say something, for instance, is in the way and it needs to shut something down, this tool will tell you, and it'll actually give you the opportunity to say, okay, I want to stop this for you. You say, go ahead and stop it. And it will do exactly that. So it's nice. If it finds some type of driver or something that's in the way, that's making it so that it can't natively read that data from that device, this tool is able to diagnose it. And a lot of tools can't do that. You know, a lot of tools just say, I can't read it and don't tell you anything more. This one, Mobile Edit actually does a great job and says, hey, I can't get into this and here's why. And it gives you opportunity to go ahead and cancel that so that way you can get into it. One neat thing about Mobile Edit I think is really cool is it's not dependent upon having iTunes running. A lot of forensic software is. A lot of forensic software, it needs iTunes to be running before it can see that device. And Mobile Edit is not one of them. It doesn't need to have that iTunes open and running before it can see an iPhone device. As you can see right here, another kind of cool thing I really like about Mobile Edit, <coughs> excuse me, I'm coughing like Scott, is that I have not, in this case right here, done an extraction yet. I've done no extraction, nothing has been pulled from that device. What's nice about it is look what it's already telling me. It's already given me a bunch of great information that is gonna be helpful to me in doing my investigation. I can already see stuff in there, like my MZ, my IMEI, and my ESN, even giving me my make and model of the phone. So this is before I've done any extraction whatsoever. It's already telling me the detailed information as far as you know, what kind of phone it is, what the MZ is, what the IMEI is, and stuff like that. And in some cases, I've had circumstances where that's all I really needed because we find a phone at a location of a dead body or something like that. But all I'm trying to find out is what account that phone comes back to so I can get the records and, and, and find out, you know, who owns it and if they were, you know, moving around and so on like that. And this does this before we even go out and get an extraction done of that device. So pretty slick. And again, not too many tools have that capability of doing this so rapidly. And it's just really neat how it does it. And it does it so fast. Another thing I kind of like about it is it also shows you here all the different types of things that you can do over here. You can do a Bluetooth connection. You connect to an iCloud account. You can do a Wi-Fi connection, import data, and, and, and so on, other stuff you can see over here. So that gives you a lot of other different capabilities. Then down here are some great ones as well, where we can do like a phone data preview, reboot it into recovery mood, mode, excuse me, or even browse the contents of the phone. And it does that all right here from this original interface. That's one of the things I really do like about this just to begin with. Another thing I like about this is that it allows me to go ahead and extract just specific data. In other words, it's not an all or nothing type of thing. Some things are. Some tools, you take everything or nothing and that's it. What's really nice about Mobile Edit is that I have different options of what I want to extract from here. So here's where I've gone ahead and I've connected a phone and I'm now moving forward into the extraction process. And you'll see what I'm able to do is I'm able to select from different options of what I want to extract. I can do specific selections, just text messages, just internet history, et cetera. Or I can do the full content. Or what's kind of neat, I can do an application analysis or I can look for just deleted data. Or I can even go ahead and look for just the device information. Kind of that thing I just talked about. I just want to find out who owns the phone, the account of the phone, so on like that. And then a thing called a parental check here. So we can see that. That's probably not going to be for us in law enforcement, but this stuff up here is absolutely always going to be for us in law enforcement right there. So what we can do is take that 
and select which of these things that we want. And I did exactly that. I went ahead and said, you know what? Here's what I want. I want to go ahead and take just certain specific information. And some of the stuff that gives me an option to take, as we can see, are things like, you know, anything that you want to take a look at, your account information, your contacts, your messages, emails, calls. And how I turn them on would be to actually put a check mark in that little box over there. Now you can see these ones, I've turned none of those on. But on this next page, I did. I went ahead and said, okay, you know what I want to look at? I want to look at GPS information. I want to look at SIM card information. And I want to see some Wi-Fi networks because maybe those are what I'm concerned with during this examination and investigation. So I don't have to go through and take everything. You know where is also nice about this one is when we have consent. You know, I had a case just recently where a young lady came up to the DA's office and the thing about it was that she was very concerned about me taking everything from her device. She was a victim. She wanted us to take the information that was relevant to her being a victim, but she didn't want me to take everything else. And, and we knew why, because she was involved in some things that probably illegal as well. We knew that. But in this case, she wasn't there because she was defended. She was there because she was a victim. And regardless if she'd been doing other stuff or not, we still need to go ahead and you know respect her and treat her with respect and make sure that we can prosecute the case where she was a victim on. And I told her, I sat down and said, hey, here's the deal. You know what? I get why you don't want all this. I understand it. No problem. How about this? How about just letting me take just this information? As soon as I said that, she sort of smiled. She perked up. She became witness number one for us again. She was great. She was a victim for us. And she did a great job for us. But it was all because I was able to just go through there and take specific certain types of data and not take everything. And I, I like that capability because there's a lot of times where we work with a lot of people that they just don't want us taking everything. And I get that. I, I truly do. You know, I, I'm not that way because I don't really put too much um, bad stuff on my phone. In fact, I put nothing bad on my phone, but some people do. And I get that, you know, while they may have something on there that, you know, it may not be the greatest stuff, they're still a victim and we still owe them the ability to go ahead and, and do the case for them. And this gives us opportunity to do that. So definitely one of, of my favorite things with this capability. Plus for me, if all I'm looking for is, you know, was this person attached to a Wi-Fi network? Now my imaging time went down from five hours to 15 minutes, you know, because I'm just trying to see where are they at the location of a crime scene at that time, I can kind of, you know, move on. Or maybe I'm only looking for like web information where they Google searching certain stuff, how to build a bomb or whatever it is. That gives me the ability to go ahead and look for that and not worry about the stuff like the passwords that it doesn't affect this case. So it, again, it takes my imaging and extraction time from five hours to 15 minutes. And in the case where you're like me and Scott, where we're just constantly running from incident to incident to incident, this really is helpful and beneficial for us. So there's another thing that I really, really like about this as well when going through here. Now, one more thing that's really cool as well is this fact that I can browse this phone. And when I first saw this, I'm like, this is honestly one of the craziest things that, that I've ever seen. I just never even thought about this. But the fact that you know they were able to go ahead and do this, I, I thought was impressive. And what it did and allowed me to do is I was able to go ahead and just browse the contents of this phone like this. And you can see where that's truly what I'm doing. I'm gonna do it live for you here in a few minutes, guys. Um, but that's truly what I'm doing. And you can see this isn't a setup. This isn't an old phone from you know months or years ago. You can see this is an iPhone 11 Pro from yesterday. I mean, that, that's when this was. And you're able to see all these different apps that are actually on that device. Look at this. Look how many apps are showing right here. And look at the fact that I've only gone down this far on that device. I still have all this distance to go. And it's showing me all of this great, amazing stuff. What's also really kind of cool about it is that you can actually extract right from here. You'll notice down here across the bottom where you can see where it says copy. What I can do is I can select that folder or a subfolder and I can take that and of course copy that out 
to my computer system. That way I can go through and analyze that one specific folder in more detail. And it actually let me go through and do it on pictures as well. You can actually go through up here and you'll see up here, and I'll do it live for you again, like I said, this is where I can change my folder location inside that live phone. And in doing so, I'm able to go ahead and select it. What I did the one time was I selected the DCIM folder. I found all these pictures. I found the one picture by name, copied it out, worked flawlessly. And, and there we go. So instead of, you know, I, I hate to say, it, but funny enough, I did two phones, uh, an, another exam yesterday, and the two phones had a total combined amount of pictures of 200,000 pictures. One had 121,000, other one had 79,000 pictures. It took forever. I, I mean, it really did because it, it was 200,000 pictures. Here's an opportunity for me to go through there and just pull exactly what I need. So that's one of the things that we can always do and, and, and you know, figure out as well. And it's just one of the things that I really like of being able to go ahead and, and take a look at that and, and see what's inside of there. So and another one that I really like as well is probably this next one. In fact, it may be my favorite thing about this. Being able to identify all the installed applications before making the extraction. Think about that. I'm able to go through here and identify all the installed applications before I do an extraction. Now, why would we ever want that? You know, well, I give this example all the time. So we have a situation where we have, you know, a crime that takes place and the crime takes place via whatever, Facebook Messenger or Snapchat or Instagram or Signal or whatever it is. It takes place via that application. Well, then all of a sudden, we get sent 10 phones, 12 phones. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to see exactly which phone it was that had that application installed before I go out and actually do the extraction of all 10 phones, cut down my imaging time by literally hours, if not days, because I'm able to go ahead and say, you know what? Okay, these eight phones, they don't even have the app involved in this investigation. We're looking for the app signal. These eight don't even have it. So why would I worry about those eight phones? Now, do I maybe image them later on? Sure, probably, possibly. But what I'm going to focus on and start with, I'm going to start with the two that have the application that committed that crime. It just kind of goes to make sense, if you will. And what it looks like is this. And this is where I was able to go ahead, same iPhone. And you can see, I was able to go through here and it showed me that on this iPhone, there are 283 apps. And look how it's showing you all the apps. And we can see all this stuff inside of here, Acorns and Airtable, Amazon, Amazon Alexa, Amazon Music, American Express, the App Store. You know, it, it just goes to show, again, look how I've only gone down this far and how much more time I have to go. So we have all of that ability to go ahead and pull this down. And it's just great. What's also neat is you can see across the top here, you can actually go through here and search to see if a certain app is in there. Because of course, you know, you don't want to go through there and, and of course, you know, try to read all 283 of them. So you can go ahead and type in that, that name and see if it populates for you. So really kind of a neat thing that it does. And again, it really cuts down on our time that needed to identify which one of these phones may have been the one responsible because of the fact that it happens to hold that app on that device. So definitely really cool um, that we're able to go ahead and do that kind of stuff, all right? So there we have that one as well, one of my other ones. Another great thing I like about this tool is that it's able to make us and give us all device information before we make a full extraction. Now, I already showed you where it showed me the IMEI, IMSI, but let's go even further. Let's say we wanna take a better look at this and we just wanna get a, a report of that phone to identify what phone that is. You know when it was coming great and handy? And I've had to do this many times. We have a homicide. We get the bad guy's records and put the bad guy at the scene. So now we know the bad guy was there. Now we know the bad guy's phone number was at that scene. What would he have to do now? We have to prove that that's the phone number from his phone. So we take the phone from his pocket when he's taken into custody. I go through and do one of these 
Now I can prove that the phone number in the IMSI, IMEI on that phone in his pocket is the phone number that hits that tower at that homicide scene. We have to do that. It's one of the things we have to make sure and do. And this gives me that capability of doing this. And I actually did a full one for you. So check it out. I went ahead and I took the phone and I said, I want just device information only. And it's going to go ahead. I hit the next button and it starts pulling the data. And you can see where it's pulling the actual data off of here. And eventually what it will do is it will finish up and it will tell me that it got all of the stuff I asked for. The PDF report, the mobile export was created, the whole nine yards. So what I'm able to do is go ahead and take a look at this, and it gives me exactly what I'm looking for. It gives me a chance to go through here and identify a whole bunch of stuff. Like first off, here's my IMEI of the device. There's the phone number of the device. Even tells me that it had a SIM card. It wasn't jailbroken. There's the serial number. There's the exact make and model. It even gives you my operating system of it. So now we have that. Now, when this is the phone that's in my pocket with that phone number, with that IMEI number, and you took it off my body, it's kind of hard for me to say that's not my phone. Now you map those records, you put them at the crime scene, and you're golden. That's great. But it doesn't stop there. That's just the first page of that report, believe it or not. There's actually a lot more in that report, like this page. Look what this page gives you. This is still just from that device info page. And when it shows me again, there is my actual make and model, even gives you the actual hardware version, the platform, the software version, what I've named it, the serial number. There's my UDID right there, my unique device identifier. I can take that number, send a search warrant to Apple, get all the Apple backups in case I may have deleted something from the phone that couldn't be recovered. Here's the device time. And you can see again, this was yesterday, guys. This wasn't on old phones months ago. That was yesterday. How about my time zone? There's all your IMEI, ESN information. Here's your different MAC addresses. So now think about this. We have a homicide. We do a router interrogation. On that router, we find a connected device. That connected device comes back to a MAC address. We just want to see if the actual phone in my pocket has that MAC address. Boom, done. We don't have to go through and extract all this information now. We can get it from simply enough doing this device info extraction. And it gives me that Wi Fi MAC address, which can then put me on that router, which then puts me at that homicide scene. I mean, what else do you want? You know, it also goes ahead and shows me there's also a SIM card in here. Then it pulls information off the SIM card. There's your IMSI. It shows me my IMSI. And for you guys that are really into this kind of stuff, you already know that my phone's an AT&T phone now. And you know my phone's an AT&T phone because the IMSI, the first three characters, tells me the country. The next three characters tells me the network. So I now know it's definitely an AT&T phone. And you can see the SIM card country, US. There's your ICC ID, my phone number. And how about even how much storage I'm using? 166 gigabytes of storage. So in other words, my phone has a whole ton of data on there. And it, it does this again. And, and I think that entire report that I did on that, it may have taken maybe 10 minutes to get all of this. And it's still not done because then it also goes ahead and does a separate sheet for just the SIM card and the MZ. And here it is. Here is what was on my SIM card. That's the MZ. As we all know, the MZ is stored on the SIM card, not on the phone. There's the ICC ID that is on the SIM card as well. And there's the owner's phone number, which is also on the SIM card. So this is where I did a device extraction, but only of the device information and not of everything. And that's going to be really, really important because then we're able to identify ownership look at that MAC address, find that MZ, find that handset number, and prove that's the device that was there at that homicide scene via the cell phone towers, via the Wi-Fi addresses, and so on down the line. Such a great and amazing thing that we can do. All right, so you would definitely want to take a look at that option right there. Um, again, that probably, if I had to pick my one absolute favorite thing, would probably be it. The fact, because a lot of times, 
All I really want is to prove that is the phone number from that device taken from that bad guy so I can map his cell phone towers and place him at the homicide scene. That's a, a lot of our cases. And this makes it so rapid and so nice where a lot of the tools, you have to take literally everything just to get that one little report. So we're taking up time, we're taking up storage space, we're taking up everything. So great capability right there. All right. Also, one other neat thing about this is you have so many different options of how to export this data. Um, it, this is what's really neat is you do get a, a wealth of different options of how we can pull the data from this device and how we want to store it. PDF, I've been showing you a PDF. I'm going to show you HTML here in a second. HTML reports, Excel reports. Plus, one thing I think is really neat is that you can actually copy the data off here and place it into a Cellbrite UFDR file. So it can be examined using their tools as well. So Mobile Edit is integrated the ability to create a UFDR by just going ahead and, and putting it into this you know, tool itself. So it's really neat. And what you're gonna do is, so here's me taking an image of a phone. Once again, I'm gonna go ahead, I do this, and I'm able to go ahead and fill out my report information like you're seeing right here. And then I can go ahead and select exactly what all I want to go ahead and pull. So I can do, of course, HTML report, PDF report, Excel report. Down here, I can do a mobile edit backup, mobile edit export, a Cellbrite UFDR, or even save an iTunes backup of it. So that way I'm able to use this tool to create this extraction that I can then pull into other tools and analyze as well. So it's just a, an amazing capability for us to go ahead and pull that data and, and place it into different formats. And I know that's one thing that Scott likes to do. We've been using mobile edit a lot in our lab in 2021, and it's been coming really one of our main go-to tools. And one of the things that Scott really likes to do is save it in these different types of images so he can pull it into those as well, which I don't blame him. It's a great idea, a great capability. And, and a lot of times mobile edit does a great job and pulls data that other tools can't. So it's definitely a neat little thing that you can do using this. So think about that, guys. I mean, from that perspective alone, if you also do have Cellbrite, you can use this tool to, to make that UFDR. And it's going to be beneficial because maybe Cellbrite can't image that certain phone, but Mobile Edit can. And this would be a great thing to add to your toolbox to pull that information into here. Simple enough. Um, so that's what it is. Now, we've seen some of the basics. Let me see how we do an extraction of an Android. So I, I took an Android yesterday, and, and true story, absolutely true story. I went back into one of our um, rooms, and we have certain rooms in our lab here where we keep evidence, and we also have another room here where we keep our training materials. And in that room where we keep our training materials, we have a, a plethora of phones. I don't know exactly how many, but there's a bunch in there. Um, boxes and boxes of phones we've had donated to us that we use when we go to classes and, and for the students to do extractions from. Honest to goodness, I just picked one out of the box, brought in, plugged it in, and it hit instantly. It, it didn't even really take that much time for me to, to, to sit there and mess with it. It just absolutely hit instantly. And I was able to go ahead and do an extraction. That's what I did. I went ahead, I hit this, and I started saying, okay, let's go ahead. Let's take the full content here. I filled out my detailed information about that case because this makes great reports. We want to use the power of that report. And then I went ahead and selected every report I could. You can see on this one, I selected everything possible, HTML, PDF, Excel, even mobile edit, mobile edit export, UFDR, and the ADV backup. And I'm gonna show you the actual contents here in a few moments. This is just yesterday. So I go ahead, I do that, and it tells me, okay, camera ballistics, do I want to turn that off or on? We're going to talk about camera ballistics in a moment. In fact, we're going to hear the answer about what camera ballistics really is from Dasan himself. But um, it, it gives an opportunity to turn camera ballistics off or on as I'm going through here. And then it tells me where I can store this. I tell you what, one thing I think is the best thing going about this. So I'm using a laptop, the laptop I'm teaching you guys from right now. And, and just from using it so much and so on again, my hard drive, it's it's filled up. It is. I'm not going to lie to you guys. And phones, as we know, as we saw in mine, mine was 166 gigabytes in size. 
I, I'm not sure I have that much space free on a laptop that I carry with me to teach. So the thing about it, you know, I, I wanted to put it on a NAS. We have a great NAS that, that Scott and I have built here in our lab. And this NAS, we can store unbelievable stuff and it's faster than pulling from a hard drive. And I'm like, what are the chances are that Mobile Edit can actually go ahead and store to basically a mapped drive, a mapped Z drive. And sure enough, if I wasn't stunned that it did it in a heartbeat, no problem whatsoever. I went ahead and I just navigated out there and said, let's see if it'll do it. Let's see if it'll actually store properly to one of these mapped NAS drives. And sure enough, no problem. It, it, it knocked it out of the park. Couldn't have been happier. A lot of tools say they will do it. But there's a lot of problems. I had another tool recently that said it could do it properly, and it just couldn't. Every time we tried, it failed. And we tried over and over and over again, and it failed. Um, this one, no problem whatsoever. It knocked out of the park. And sure enough, I went ahead. I went through. I let it go ahead and start acquiring the data. And it starts going through here. And you'll see, it's actually telling you what all it was able to find. Phone book contents, organizers, messages, calls sims all kinds of great stuff and you can see it's even showing you it's reading the files and as it goes through here it keeps going through and eventually you'll see your actual device ask you some questions so i had to make sure and pay attention to the device itself and it was telling me what it was doing as it was doing this so it was neat because i was able to pay attention to not only mobile edit but also the device and their forensic connector, which just so you know, when you start this extraction, the, the tool, mobile is going to tell you, hey, we're going to upload and install our connector onto the device. You absolutely going to say yes. And it'll give you a bunch of hints. If I also told it to go ahead and make an ADB, an Android backup, when it gets to that point in time, mobile it warns me, hey, I'm about to go ahead and make an ADB make sure and say back up my data on the phone. So it gives you this great capability of warning you of what you have to do on the device. It's not like one of the things where it's just, you know, plug and pray and hope that it goes ahead and, and, and does it. Mobile Edit really coaches you and guides you through the process of knowing what you need to do. And it does it fairly rapidly as well. Some tools you have to sit there and wait over and over and over again this one, it put all the stuff, it preloaded it. You got a chance to go ahead, do this, and move on. As it continued on, you'll see it's now going ahead and extracting all of the information from this device. It's creating these files. And you can even see right down here where it's telling me it's creating that mobile edit backup. So it's now going through there. It's creating that backup of this device. It'll eventually tell you that it is complete. And you'll see where it tells you absolutely that HTML was created, PDF created, mobile data export created, Excel created, CDR created, or excuse me, UDR created. Everything's done. And it tells you, okay, your extraction is finished. And when I did that and I got it finished, sure enough, what it looked like is it looked like this. And, and just look at the amount of data this thing pulled. And you can see how it puts it in here. There's my ADB backup. It absolutely created an ADB backup. Here are all my PDF files. Here is going to be my UFDR that I can pull into Cellbrite. Here are my Excel spreadsheets. Here are my HTML files. Here's my PDF. It, it made literally everything I told it to make. And again, guys, you can see this was all yesterday morning. And the thing about it, which impressed me the most, was it did this really rapidly. Um, you know, now it still took some time because, of course, extracting that much data and creating a UFDR, creating the PDFs, creating the ADB does take time. But honestly, the, I bet the entire duration it took me, it, it probably wasn't more than a half hour, 45 minutes. But keep in mind, this wasn't a huge phone, but it still did it really, really rapidly. And it made what I think is a great looking report. Here's your report right here. And you can see, here's the report, and it tells me all the great stuff. So here's my case information. Of course, there's a manufacturer, device. It gives you all your platforms, serial number, IMEI. It tells me if I rooted it or not, if there's a SIM card or not. It even gives me the owner's phone number. Over here is where it tells me 
all the data that it pulled. So I can look at my deleted data or my contacts or my messages, organizer, applications. And of course, if there's a plus sign here, I can go ahead and click on that plus sign and it will expand that option so I can see more and better data, kind of like this. And I really like the way that their, their reports look, especially with the messaging and stuff. You can kind of see how great this message looks. And you'll see, I mean, look at this. That's one little dot with all that much room to go. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here, but look how it's actually showing you about, you know, who it's from, who it's to, and even kind of color codes that you can see. And you know what I think is really nice is, and a lot of tools don't do this, and it kind of makes me nuts. But it's really nice. It actually is able to go ahead and put the actual little, you know, smiley faces and avatars and stuff back in there where a lot of tools don't. Um, and that kind of makes me nuts because that's what they really did. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see something that they didn't do. I want to see what they absolutely did. And that's how it looks. And that's what it looks like right there. So let me show you this full image that I did yesterday of this device. I'm going to show you one other thing as well. I'm going to show you um, how a phone's attached to it right now and what all is available on this live phone right now. So give me a second. I'm going to open up First off, mobile edit itself for us right now and just show you some really cool stuff about this. And here is what mobile edit looks like with a phone attached right now. So we can see mobile edit right here. And you're seeing right now truly that this is a live phone attached. And we can see where we have the IMEI, the ESN, the MZ. And you can see I could disconnect the phone, but we don't want to do that. We can do a phone data preview or we can do a browse phone. Remember I talked about that browsing the phone and seeing what's in there? I can actually click on that browse phone and look at that. You can go through here and browse this phone. There's my applications. Here's my internal memory. I can take these things and just double click those and open them up. And in a few moments in time, what you'll see happen is it will absolutely go ahead and let me see all that those different folders of those applications build up and be displayed. It takes a minute or two, but not too long. And it's really great that we can actually see this because then again, what's nice is I can go through there and see, does this device actually have that data on there? Do I have the correct device? What's also kind of cool, that's building up, as you can see down through here, there we go, done. You can copy these out. So I could copy these things out. So if I found an app that I wanted to copy out so I could do more analysis on, that's where I press that little button right there. But here's where we have this. Look at all these different apps in here. And all I'm going to do is take these things and of course hit the copy button and it copies them out for me. And I can even tell it where to go ahead and copy it to. So I can say that mobile edit test. So I can actually take that, that app right there and just press that button and it'll say, do I want to select these um, copy selected items? Absolutely I do. And look at that. Done. That's how fast it was. Look, there it is. I've just now copied the contents of that folder over to there. And the same thing with all this other stuff. I can grab this stuff and just say, you know what? I really need to look and see if there's anything in this past book. Copy. Yep. Boom. There we go. So we can see that. And you can go through here and you can change your different locations. Um, and, and we can, of course, go back into those different locations. So those different folders and so on like that. That's where that browsing comes into play. Really great capability. It's really one of my, my favorite things about this. And that was right there on that browse. What's also nice, if I hit this next button right down here, you can see I can go ahead and I can filter data. And I can filter data based on time. Or I know one, this is one of the things when Desan and I really first started talking in detail a couple of months ago, he, he told me one thing that kind of blew me away. And I was like, I'm not sure. I don't even know if it's possible, but sure enough, it is. You can actually filter by contact. So you can actually go ahead and put the person's name or phone number or whatever in there and filter that information by their name, phone number, ID, whatever it is. You can filter it by that and the date and so on. So you can filter on filtering, kind of a neat thing it's able to do. We can see that would be in here, or I can do a full content, or I can do an app analysis. And that's where I went through here, and I click on this. And this one does take a while, and there it is. Look at that. Look how fast that thing went. And these are the apps that are on this device. 
And it's absolutely true. These are the apps on this device. And what I can do then is if I want to go ahead and, and you know select that application to extract the data, I can, of course, just take that, press that button right there and take a look at this. Now, speaking of apps, one thing I want to show you guys, we're going further, is what all apps does this work on natively? And this is a pretty impressive list. I'm not going to lie to you guys. So I want to show it to you. They made a great web page of this. And I'm going to show it to you live right now, just so you guys can see this. So give me a second here, guys. And what we're going to look for is this. This is their listing on their website of all the apps that they right now are supporting. And it's, it's a pretty impressive list. And you can go through, you can of course search it, whatever you wanna do. You get on through here and you can see all the apps that are here. Now I'm looking at, you know, 20 apps per page, 53 pages. Of course, what I always do, I, I'm lazy. So I always press the hundred, let it rebuild. But we can go through here and you can see a lot of these apps like Airbnb, it supports it on both iOS and Android, as we can see here. Amazon Kindle, Amazon Prime Video, Amazon Shopping. It shows you all these apps that are being supported. And kind of a neat little thing we can do is go through here. So again, if you see on the device that app and you want to see, does it natively support that app? You go to their website here and it actually goes ahead and shows it to you. You can also, on the website, you can see we can actually request support. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to do it right away, but I, I know Desaad and Dwayne, their guys, they do a great job. They do listen to requests. So, you know, that may be something if you have a really big case that, that maybe you could do. All right. But let me get back to my tool here again really quick. And I want to keep showing you this. You'll see how it gives me this capability to go ahead and add these things to that, you know, extraction. And you can see, look how great this is and how this actually shows. If you wanted to go through and say, okay, but I wanna see, does like a certain one appear in here? I can just take and type in signal and there it is, boom, signal. That's it right there. You know, do they have Snapchat on here? Boom, there's Snapchat. And we can see, how about texting applications? How many textings do they have in there? Well, there's four in there right now. So by just going through here and typing this kind of stuff in, it allows us to go ahead and see what all is supported. Now, of course, we don't have enough time for me to image this entire device today, but we do have time to do one more thing, which is gonna be, let's look at that image I created yesterday. And I'm gonna to go to it right now for you guys. So give me a second here, and I'm gonna pull this up into here right now. Funny enough, before I even show you the inside of that, I'm gonna show you one more thing. And that's gonna be, remember how just a few moments ago, I copied out those apps like right there, there they are. There's me copying out those apps today at those two times right there. It, they actually did absolutely copy out from that phone onto my drive where I told them to go to. We can go through there and you can see anything that would be inside of there. There's your P list, you know, and you can see that information inside of there. There's another P list right there. So we can see that kind of stuff inside of there. But that one I did yesterday, that Android device, check this one out. I go in here, I open this up, and look how much data is inside of here. This thing is massive. Look at all your Excel spreadsheets. And then we can see in here, there is absolutely your UFDR. So that can be pulled into Cellbrite. Of course, here's your ADB. There's your Android backup right there. So we got that one right there. And then you can see all these. There's your mobile edit export files. There it is right here. There's your export files and your data. We can see that. But the thing I like the best, here's my PDF report. I'll open it for us. So we can see it. Here's my PDF report right here. And just a great PDF report. If you look at it, it actually shows you this. And of course, all these links down here are absolutely active. And I can click on them and you can see those links are absolutely active. We can go down through. You can see how it's opening them up. So we can see contact list, contact groups. Here's my messages, conversations, detailed messages organizers, even all of your list of applications. And look how many applications this thing identified as being inside of here. So we can show you all of that. And it just shows you all this in a great resource like this. And here you go. How long did it take to image this? Well, it tells you right there. 
So that, that was the imaging time right there. So that's how long it took. Not long at all, obviously. There's your PDF report. And I'm a big PDF guy. The reason why is because most of the attorneys that I work with, they like having that, that PDF report. One thing that's also nice though, and I know Scott likes this way, he likes that HTML report, which will look like this. And here it is right here. So here's that HTML report. And here's that thing I talked to you about where if you're going through here, you can see like, for instance, if you wanna see your messages, you can click on this and you can see your conversations and your messages and they'll be like right in here. You can see your information taking place right there. And you can see all your files in here. Even your location data is going to be in there and it gives you your location data. And there is your latitude and longitude right there. So we're able to go ahead and find that. Even your SIM card data is inside of here and it shows there's your SIM card. That's the phone number. There is the MZ, the whole nine yards. It's all sitting right there. And of course your web history as well. So this is your report that this makes. And then of course, we last but not least do have that UFDR that we could take and we could pull that of course into our tool. So we'd be able to go ahead and, and you know, do the analysis of the tool as well. And the reason I like doing that, we can always check and make sure maybe, you know, Cellbrite can parse an app that, that Mobility can't or vice versa. So using more than one tool gives us more than one capability.